Hello everyone, it's me Clayson. I just finished watching Harley Quinn Season 3, Episode 5. So with Frank being captured, Poison Ivy has to access the green in order to find out where he is. But she can't exactly find him at this moment, so she decides to get help from one of the only beings who has a stronger connection to the green than she does, that being Swamp Thing. Unfortunately, he's an empath, and Poison Ivy already stated that she hates all of humanity, so th these two don't exactly get along. So Harley decides to head to New Orleans with her, with Nora Freeze joining along the party. Basically, since she's been unfrozen, and since Mr. Freeze died in Season 2, she's kind of a hard-drinking party girl now. So she, so she basically ends up turning this New Orleans trip into a girl's trip full of all the drugs and alcohol you can think of, and they also happen to run into John Constantine, who is, has a pretty fun cameo, as well as the fact that he shows them where Swamp Thing is after they eventually manage to outdrink him. Well, Nora outdrinks him. Harley and Poison Ivy end up hungover afterwards. On top of that, we see that Catwoman and Batman's relationship isn't exactly getting off pretty well, and Alfred decides to to send them over to a musical therapist to help to have them express how they really feel about each other. No, literally, the therapist has a power over music that has them sing their feelings to each other. And the idea of Batman being forced to sing along with Catwoman... Okay, Cap Batman's been forced to sing before as part of as part of Batman the Brave and the Bold, but Batman singing with Catwoman has, I don't think it's been done before. So it is pretty funny to hear, to hear these two uh, singing with each other as part of a big duet together. Plus, the guy who voices Batman has a pretty solid singing voice, as, as is the actress who plays Catwoman here. Hey, getting two Persian cats named, Mar named Martha and Thomas may not work, but this certainly did. On top of that... When we meet Swamp Thing, he actually seems like a pretty chill guy at first, even if he does hook up with Nora pretty fast. But when he snaps, when he has an emotional an emotional moment, man, you can you can tell why he's an absolute menace of the swamp. But turns out accessing the green is more of an emotional block for Poison Ivy, since all she needed to do was let out her vulnerabilities and she could eat more easily access the green. I guess that's why Swamp Thing was more emotionally open in this version, because accessing the green would naturally come easier to someone who wasn't holding something back in his heart. So I can understand what Swamp Thing was, what they were going for with Swamp Thing, even if it is different from his in-universe characterization, because honestly, the series has de has mixed around characterizations and plot beats quite a bit. So I really don't mind how they portray a Swamp Thing here, or Nora, considering Nora barely has any characterization in most versions. She's mostly just the person that that Mr. Freeze has as a motivation, which is fine. I just think that her characterization here is hilarious, because it's so, so off how I'd usually consider Nora to be when it comes to how I, I'd picture her. So it's generally, it's generally another thing that makes Harley Quinn an effective satire. It happens to bring in a lot of jokes and characterizations that you wouldn't really expect for some characters who don't get much characterization or don't get much focus. So with Frank being located and us finding out who happens to have captured him, what are Poison Ivy and Harley going to do once they get to Wayne Manor? We'll see you next week. See you next time.